Hello and welcome to Billy's Budget Ballers, featuring a lowland executor. Hey Eggman, what do you do? Well for one grass energy, tropical shake, 20 base damage. Meh. But, for each type of basic energy card in your discard pile, it does an extra 20. Up to a, an extra 100 damage in this way, hitting for 120 for one grass energy. Really good value but we might need to power this up just that little bit more. So Lorantis, sunny day. The attacks of your grass or fire Pokemon do an extra 20. Suddenly we're hitting for 140. Getting over that 130, that key number for a lot of non-GX matchups. But what if you're running against GX Pokemon? Well, Choice Band. We're now up to 170, close to one shot range, but with a shrine, we might chip away our Pokemon into those one shots with a non-GX Pokemon. Very nice indeed. So, we've got to run with different types of NGs. I'm running with six here. I need to get five of them in the discard pile. How do I do that? With some Shuckle Love, fresh squeezed. When you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench, you may search for up to three basic NG cards and chuck them in your discard, powering up our Executor nicely. And that is how the combo works. So, how do we get ourselves set up? Grovile. Sunshine Grace. Once during your turn, you may search your deck for a grass Pokemon, reveal it and put it into your hand. Thinning our deck nicely, but also setting ourselves up at the same time. Now, because we're not running any other kind of draw support, we're gonna run a few extra supporters to help us draw. So four Cynthia, three Lily, three Sightseer, which has the added benefit of discarding cards that you don't need, NGs, things like that and a Tatanalyzer to give us a choice of switching or shuffling and drawing again. So that's how we're getting our draw support in this deck. What else is key is this Skeptile. He's really here for one kind of matchup and that Ultra Beast matchups, whether they're Blacephalons or whether they're a different type of Ultra Beast like Necrozma, something like that. So, Power of Nature, if you've got this up, you prevent all damage done to your Pokemon that has any Grass Energy attach for any attacks from Ultra Beasts. Comes key in some matchups, we're throwing away in others. We're running two here just in case we come against an Ultra Beast matchup and we've got one of our Skeptiles prized. So that's what he's here for. I also like his one retreat value though because that can get ourselves out of the active really nicely if they're trying to get our Grovile stuck who's got two retreat costs. So that's good as well in some matchups. The only other key thing here is we're running Netball, because of course we are. It's a grass deck. This is good for early game, but also late game. You search your deck for either a basic grass Pokemon or a basic grass energy card, depending what you need at the time. And that is how this deck works. So, shall we begin? I think we shall. Hello and welcome, DJ Hav... Ha HD Av? Hatch... HDAV? Eh, whatever. All right, we're going to go with an Execute up front. And that's all I can do at the moment. So we've got the Ultra Ball to chuck an NG into the discard. We'll decide based, hopefully, on what I see from his deck. Oh, is this a mirror match? Could be a mirror match. Whether or not I need the Skeptile. If it's a mirror match, I definitely don't need the Skeptile. And instead, we'll go, we'll get rid of the, dis, uh, the Skeptile. We shall have a look. Yes, I'll draw a card. It's Trico up front. Now, if it's a mirror match, I am going second, which isn't ideal. But we do get to discover whose deck's going to roll a little bit better, which should be good. So he's chucking the NG onto Trico. Find out whether or not this is a mirror match. So he's going with double Trico. It could be a Skeptile deck. The Skeptile GX version, not the Skeptile that I've got sitting here. It's got Life Forest, so I can take advantage of that while it's in play. So that's good for me. I'm not going to be attacking on the next turn anyways, so that doesn't really bother me. The Life Forest suggests that this is not an Execute. by Executor deck. This could be a Lorantis GX and Skeptile deck. It's a pity that I'm not getting the 
first move in. That is a little bit disappointing for me. I've got double Ultra Balls, so I can get some stuff into action. So what I'm thinking here is we use the Ultra Ball, we get rid of the Energy and the Skeptile. I don't think the Skeptile here is going to serve me much. And we go and get the Shuckle just to get the Shuckle Love into action, get rid of the Energies from my deck, because I need to desperately get rid of them because I don't want to draw into them. So we'll go with some Shuckle Love here. We'll get rid of three NGs like this. And now what I've really got to decide at this point is whether I want to use the other Ultra Ball and guarantee something. But what am I discarding? Potentially a Grass NG, which does power up my attack. But I also want to guarantee an NG on the Executor. I might actually just put the NG on the Executor and Cynthia. Because I don't want to get rid of the Lorantis in this matchup either. So, we get a tree case, so that's good. And we do have a netball. Uh, we've got another NG as well. Do I want to get rid of the life forest this turn? Probably not. So, we're going to netball here. We're going to go and get ourselves a Fomantis as well, just so we've got that in the action. And we'll chuck that down. We're not going to get rid of the life forest because if he does attack this turn and doesn't KO me with something, it does give me an opportunity to use that. And right now he's getting no love out of the forest anyway. And I can introduce a shrine on the next turn. So to see what my opponent does. Pretty happy with the first turn. We've got a Trico, a Fermentus, and a couple of Executes up. We do have another Cynthia in hand, so that's good. Got a choice band to chuck on here if this is a GX variant. And if it is a GX variant, that's really good for me because I've got a shrine as well. Getting a couple of uh, Lorances up is pretty critical for him because he's going to need to be able to one-shot these Executors. So being able to target those Fermentuses in the back line I think is pretty critical. He does have the Grovile, which is extremely good because it means he can get two Groviles and a Lorantis in play on this particular turn. The Choice Band, that's not going to hurt me right now. So if he's smart, he'd probably go and get a second Grovile. Yep, and then use that to get a Lorantis. The upside is if he doesn't retreat, which by the looks of it, he's probably not, unless he's got a Guzma action. It does mean that I do get a cheeky KO out of that Grovile, and he only gets one shot from using the Grovile. He's going to prioritise getting the Lorantis that powers up. It's not a bad turn for my opponent. He is able to KO the Execute, so that's disappointing for me. Do have another Execute in play. There is another NG into the discard. Not that I really need it on this particular turn. So unfortunately he does get to take the first KO. He is going to spend two energies doing that. Assuming that I can get the Executor this play. So the executor of this play is pretty important for me. We're going to chuck the shrine out here just to get rid of the life for us. We're going to chuck a choice band onto this execute. We're going to Cynthia and hopefully find my way into a way to get executor on the board. And I do have that way, thankfully. So we've got an ultra ball here. I do feel like these skeptiles aren't probably going to be much good to me. So we'll get rid of a sightseer and the skeptile. And we'll go and get myself the grovile here. And the Grovile will be able to get me the Executor up. So that's really good for me. I've got a Ditto here that I can play down, which is probably going to be pretty important for being able to evolve later. Going to Sunshine Grace here into an Executor. And take a KO. So hopefully that does put my opponent a bit more on the back foot. Getting the KO there is good. Getting a Grass NG so I can start powering up something else. The Ditto is probably going to become an Executor in this matchup. Now, if he is evolving himself... Nope, he's going to go with Double Lorantis. Alright. Alright. 
I'm wondering if this is a Skeptile GX matchup. It certainly is. Now he needs double uh, Grass NG on the Skeptile to use the Leaf Cyclone. So he is going to be two shotting at this point. Now I don't have the Guzma to be able to... If I do top deck a Guzma, I'm thinking that we go and pull up one of those Lorantises instead. And attack with this, make it an um, Executor and attack with that. But that would require top decking a Guzma, which is unlikely, so I'm probably going to have to start chipping my way into the Skeptile instead. Which is less than ideal. He's got a second uh, Trico out there to power up. That's really good for him. But he is still two shotting. Now it's Shine Chips away, which is really nice for me. I'm thinking getting another Trico up is probably important as well, because that will allow me to get more up in the future. So we're going to Trico here. I'm thinking getting an Executor is really important. So we're going to Grovile here for an Executor, just to pull one out of the deck. That is my last Executor too. Wow, two of them are prized. So I need to find Rescue Stretches pretty soon. Or, I need to find my way into the Executors that are prized. So, that's less than ideal to see that. We're going to put a Grass NG on the Executor here. We're going to Lily for 5 and see what that brings. Do have another Shrine if he's able to ditch the Shrine on the next play. I've got an Ultra Ball to help out as well. So, at this stage, I think I just hold on to the hand that I've got. A Tropical Shake. And we'll start chipping into this Skeptile. So... For my opponent now, he's in within one shot of taking two prize cards. So this is a two for one trade if he decides to take out the Executor here. Which is really good for me. Um, and he'd be probably wise to start powering up the uh, Grovile that's here. Because that will be out of one shot on the next play. Which puts me under pressure to have to find that Rescue Stretcher. Or find an executor in my prize cards. Because he'll be able to get another cheeky KO on the bench, which is good. Having a Tapu Lele out there is good for me because the shrine will work away at that. And bring it within one shot range as well, which is quite nice. So, I'm feeling like this game right now is right on the border. I don't think... I don't think I have the advantage, but I don't think he has the advantage at this stage either. He probably is looking desperately for a Grass NG, because he needs to be able to get a Grass NG on that Grovile right now. So he's able to use Leaf Cycle on the next turn. If he doesn't draw into the Grass NG, that's really good for me, because it means he still has to two-shot my Executor. That's sitting on the bench on the next turn. So he's going to Max Potion instead. So that's another way around it. It's actually probably the better way around it. Did not really see that coming, and now he definitely has the advantage in this matchup. I need to find my way in this turn to an execute on the bench, which is easy enough to do, but I also need to find my way into uh, a rescue stretcher because I am running out of executors. Having two executors prized in this matchup is really not good for me. So right now, this goes and gets me a Lorantis. And the other one goes and gets me an Execute, I feel. And I need to find those stretches. That is absolutely desperate for this turn. I need to find some stretches. So, we'll go and chuck the Lorantis down. Do I thin right now? I think I need to thin. So, we're going to play the Netball instead, just to start thinning this. And go and get me the Execute. Rather than using the other Grovile for it. So we'll pull the Execute. We are going to chuck a Grass NG on that Execute. And then we're going to Sightseer and ditch my whole hand here. Because I desperately need to find me a Rescue Stretcher. Because I'm not going to be taking this Skeptile this turn. I've got a Guzma for the next turn if I can. I do get the Rescue Stretcher, so that is huge. I need to shuffle three. Uh, I need to go and get me this Executor back. I probably should have waited in that stretcher now I think about it because it's the Executors that I've got really short resources of. So that probably wasn't the smartest move in the world because he's going to be able to one-shot this Executor 
uh, and potentially, well, if he's t if he heals, he's two shotting. So that's good. So let's use the Sunshine Grace here and draw this Executor out. So I've got it in hand, ready to roll. And right here, I just use a Tropical Shake. And hopefully I'm able to get a two for one trade here. I do need to find the Executors that are prized. That max potion play was really clutch for him, but I do keep him under pressure that if he decides to go for the one shot, He's not powering up a one-shot for the next turn. And he is allowing me to take two prize cards and level the prize card brace. Him going first in this matchup is really absolute clutch. I'm still trying to play catch-up right now in the prize cards. But we'll see what my opponent does here. So he needs a Grass NG to take the one-shot. Which means he'd be committing the Grass NG here and he's able to save that Grass NG at the same time to get a one shot on the next turn as well, which is really good for my opponent. And puts me under a lot of pressure on how I'm actually taking these KOs. I do have the Guzma in hand that I could use, but I feel like if he attacks and gets the one shot, I need to take out this Skeptile. If I can get a Lorantis down though, he's not one-shotting anymore. Touching the energy there is surprising. I would have actually attached it here, although he's going to Guzma. What's he going to go after? The Execute that's on bench. So he's trying to get rid of my resources and take as many prizes as he can. I think I Guzma back here and take out. Yeah, I'm definitely going to go the Guzma play back here. So we're going to chuck Shuckle up front. And Guzma back and take the two prize cards, because I desperately need it. And that is the play that we go for. I do kind of want to get rid of the Lorantis as well. But I don't think we go for that. Although, I've got to think about it. Going after Lorantis gets me one prize card right here, right now. But it stops him from one-shotting. He has to two-shot from there on out my exec executors so it could buy me turns in the long run and i'm thinking that might be the better play i hold on my grass energy on this particular turn so we're definitely goosemaring it's just a case of what do i actually bring into play do i go after lorantis so two prize cards right now puts me to three he's going to start attacking the skeptile and he can one shot me back and I'm still on a two-shot no matter what. And he's got the opportunity to heal that Skeptile if I don't. If I take out the Lorantis, he has to go for two-shot kills. Which buys me a turn. He's not going to get another Lorantis up. And he's only hitting for 150. Because these things power up 20, don't they? Yep, so I'm going to go after a Lorantis here. So change of plans, going after the Lorantis. Not going to take the two prize cards. We're going to go with this play, just so he's two-shotting me instead. And I hold on to that grass energy because I just, I don't want to run out of energy resources here. So we've got one prize card. Hopefully it's an executor. I don't get into the executor. That's unfortunate. But he's no longer in one-shot territory. So he now has to two-shot. The shrines just chip away quite nicely for me. I do have one other Guzma somewhere in the deck to try and snipe somewhere else. Is he going to go and try and set up another Lorantis? I'm very interested to see what my opponent now does. So the Mac cut is only going for 80. It's still two-shotting, unfortunately. So he has to commit one NG to a two-shot. But I'm also two-shotting back. Now, the longer he leaves this in the active... Mm, it's going to be very interesting because Max Potions, who's he actually Max Potioning for? He's going to get rid of the Guzma here. And bring in a Ditto. So seeing that D Guzma hit the discard is making me a little bit happier. Because it means he's not going to bench snipe the Execute again and get another cheeky prize card, which would be bad for me. That bench snipe before was a pretty good move, I felt. 
So he can't bench snipe on this turn, which is good. He's obviously trying to power up another Lorantis. To try and get within one shot range again. Now I'm doing 170, so that's 200. Could actually Guzma here. And take that cheesy, uh, cheeky prize card that's sitting on the bench. Although, how many max potions do I think he's going to have? Or do I bench snipe the Lorantis no matter what? So he's still only two-shotting. I think we actually go with that play because if he doesn't heal this particular Skeptile that's in the active right now, it means that I'm one-shotting it with my next Executor. Although, no, I need a choice band to get the one-shot. Uh, do I go after this Lorantis? I think I actually go after the Lorantis here. Yeah, let's go after the Lorantis. And take out this Lorantis, so it's definitely not going to be one-shotting on the next turn. I'm assuming he was trying to power up another Lorantis, so he's in one-shot territory. There's an Executor. That's what I want to see. Start seeing some Executors from the prize cards. I do need Grass Engies as well. How many Grass Engies do I have left? Five... Committed. Not enough. <laughs> um, seeing that Guzma hit the discard's good as well. So hopefully he hasn't got a Guzma here to go and get um, this Executor off the bench. That would be really bad for me if he's able to do that this turn. Don't know how many Guzmas he's running. He is putting his Lorantis's back. So I think going after the Lorantis was a really good play. <laughs> Because he's not within one-shot territory. So, and he's going to take two turns before he's back within one-shot territory. If he can get off the Executor, that's really bad for me. Because it pulls him back ahead of the prize card race. Being able to switch would actually be good. Actually using a Tate and Eliza here might be the better play if he keeps this Executor in the active. Because 50, if I hit for 170, that's done. Uh, for this Skeptile and pulls him within one prize. He's going to have to max, max potion that Skeptile, which is what I assumed was coming here. Which, I'm not sure if he realises, but this Skeptile that's actually in the active right now is really prone to being taken out in the next turn. He might have been nearly better off actually jungle healing. He's going to go with the Leaf Cyclone to be able to transfer this Leaf NG back to the back line, which is a really good move. Doesn't quite get the one shot, and that's super important for me. The Shrine chips away, so right now I need to do some quick maths. I'm hitting for 140, that's 190, it's not gonna take it out, so I need to switch on this particular turn. So that's what I'm gonna, oh no, I've got the Choice Band in hand, so I don't even need to run the switch. So Choice Band, I've got that KO here. What do I need to pull in from my deck? I don't want... Oh, there's nothing else to pull in. Okay, that's fine. So, what I'm doing here is... Do I want to get more cards in? We might as well just pull for two. See what I get out of this. Good, I've got NGs to go as well. That's all I need. So, right now, we Tropical Shake. I want to know how many NGs I've actually got in here. Let's just have a look. He's probably wondering what I'm doing. So I've got one more NG after this. So I've got enough to power up all the execu executors that I need. I do need to be able to get one more executor up and running. Or do I? One, two. Yeah, just one more executor up and running in this matchup. And now I'm really putting him on the back foot here. I wish I did have one more Guzma because then I could bench snipe. But, he's under a lot of pressure here to keep all his Pokemon healed. That Shrine, just chipping away at him is really good for me. If he's able to get rid of the Shrine, that's really good for him. I wonder if I've got any Shrines left in deck. So, right now, 40, that brings it to 190. He's got two turns with this Skeptile. I am two-shotting the Skeptile no matter what. And if he's able to save the Skeptile, that's really bad for me. So he's two-shotting back at this stage. So I've got to just start putting the pressure on this Skeptile, see whether he can heal it. How many max potions has he used? I think it's only two. 
Yeah, so I've only seen two max potions. I'm assuming with this tanky style that he's running a four max potion. That's what I'm going to assume here. Uh, if he can bench snipe that execute, that's good for him. That's something I've got to be worried about. Or if he can bench snipe full stop, to be honest, right now. So, I don't think I've got much choice. Let's just chuck the grass energy on as well. We tropical shake here. And we hope that... He's unable to heal. If he's able to heal, the game probably becomes his, unfortunately. It's all about whether or not he can heal. If I was able to get double Lorantis up, it would have been really good, but I don't have two Lorantises in deck. So what's my opponent going to do here? What is the play? If he is able to heal, it hurts. If he's not able to heal, then that's game for me. So let's see what my opponent is doing. He's putting a Grass NG to the back line for whatever reason. Is there a chance? If he brings that Skeptile out, it's one shot it anyway. So he can't bring anything from the back line out here. I'm really thinking that he probably has to use a Jungle Heal or a Max Potion in this play. Otherwise, it's game. He's going to use the Jungle Heal. So that's good for him. And gives him another turn. So what I'm doing here is I'm just bringing this Executor up. And I once again put pressure back on him with a Tropical Shake. So he is very aware that he's still within one shot range. So now it's interesting to see, is he going to power up another Skeptile from the bench? That could be good for him. To buy him another turn. And retreat to that Skeptile. Keep in mind that... It's whatever's happening is he's only going to be two-shotting. Taking out those Lorantises, I think, was absolutely key to this matchup. He's only got three turns max anyway, because he's running out of Pokemon in his deck. By the looks of things, I have come home with the win. Wow, very good game for my opponent. I'm giving him a well played on that. Fantastic match. And I just came home there with a nice Tropical Shake. What a match up there. Taking out those Lorances, um, when I did, I think was absolutely clutch. Coming into those Guzmas was absolutely clutch. Wow, fantastic match. Good game, good game. Hello and welcome, Bishop1517. Welcome to the matchup. Shuckle up front, not what I want. Not ideal at all. Lycan Rock deck. Could be an interesting matchup, this one. I'm going to be his weakness. So that's good. Buzzwall as well. Not going to be his weakness. So, we... I think we actually use this on you guys because I can rescue stretcher as well. Let's get rid of this hand and go and get me some shuckle love. Kind of want to protect myself from these buzz walls. So we're going to ultra ball out. This as well as... This will pull me five, this will pull me five. It's five either way. The light pulling me out Trico is very important here. It's because I need to find my way into some Skeptiles. We're going to put those Pokemon back into my deck. And force him to attack with Lycan Rock instead. That's the aim of this. Got a Grovile. I do need to go and get myself an Execute. So I've got a potential attacker on turn two. Don't have an NG that I can put on the Shuckle, which is a bit disappointing. But we'll see what my opponent does here.
Last world match is going to be hard to overcome. So he's got the Deancey out. He's going to be able to hit 30 onto the bench. I'm assuming he's going to go after the Trico. That's what I would certainly be going after. If I get an energy here, I think I Guzma. Going after the egg. Didn't get the energy, so I'm not Guzma in. Or do I Guzma anyway and hope I can get him stuck? Let's Guzma anyway and hope I can get him stuck. Big risk here. Gonna Guzma anyway and hope I can get him stuck. Gonna go and pull me out an executor. And that's just going to end the turn there. And see what my opponent has to hit in after that. So the fact that my... He's, gonna... He's got the switch. That is really unfortunate. He's able to take out the Shuckle. I'm hoping he goes after Shuckle. Good. That I can live with. Because right here, I can actually stop him... Potentially... From attacking... With the Buzzwell. And the Lycanroc's not going to be ready to attack next turn. So we're going to get the Shrine into action. He's going to be able to hit 30 on the bench. I think I just take the 30 damage. I think that's what we do. We'll just take the 30 damage here. We're going to go and get a Grass NG. And... I don't like the fact that I'm not currently protected with the Skeptile, but I can get the Skeptile out of the active if I get an energy card next turn. So we'll see what my opponent does now. So he can't hit the Executor. He can hit the back line though. And he is within one shot now. So what my play now is, is to try and flood the board with Grass Engies. I've got the Skeptile up. He's able to get the Shrine out straight away, so that's good for him. So he's able to put 30 damage on something. Does he go after the Skeptile or does he go after the exec uh, Execute? He's also able to pull things into the active at the moment with these rock roughs they, when they come into lichen rocks. He is setting one up to try and take out the Skeptile. And he can... Oh, he's going to go after the Execute still. I would be going after this Skeptile if I was him. Oh, well, we'll go and get a Grass NG. And um, we'll chuck that NG onto... I kind of want to protect the Skeptile here. I'm going to put the Grass Engie onto the Skeptile. And we're going to sit. I actually just want to draw four because then I can get out of the next hand if I need to. So unfortunately, I am risking my Execute going down on this particular plane. Do I have three Executors there? But he's not able to attack this Executor right now. Or he potentially is if he's able to get the Lycan Rock up. 
Alright, let's take the two prize cards, see where I get to. Knowing that he's going to have to use Lycan Rock as his main attacker. And I am protecting the Skeptile. I think that's more important is to protect the Skeptile from Buzzwolves. Does he have the Guzma in hand? Does he have everything in hand to be able to take down the Skeptile? No, he doesn't. Wow, that Skeptile came in clutch to get me up in that game. And it is time to rate this deck. So, what do I think? Well, let's start with damage. And the damage here is pretty good. You are two-shotting a lot of the time, particularly in the early game with the Tropical Shake. But you do have one shot potential with GX decks if you can get the Shrine over a few turns. Because this is going to be attacking for 120, 140 with the Lorantis in play, it's up to 170 with a Choice Band, 180 with a Shrine for one turn, but if this can stay up over a few turns, it's got two shot potential for tankier GX Pokemon. So that's really good as well. So offense or the damage output, pretty good. Two shotting to begin with, one shot potential for GX decks over a few turns. I'm giving this an 8 out of 10. So what about defense? Well the defense in the early stage is really susceptible. These little baby executes, 40 HP, really susceptible. Susceptible to bench sniping, susceptible to damage spread while they're little babies. But when they grow up into big grown up Eggmans, 160, that's really awkward to have to get over particularly for only one prize card. So the defense when they grow up is really good. Plus we have Ultra Beast protection with our Skeptile. Get one of these up and you're stopping Glacephalons, you're stopping Buzzwolves, you're stopping any kind of Ultra Beast deck from hurting your Pokemon. So the defense here is really good. I'm giving this a 9 out of 10. So what do I think about reliability? Well, the reliability of this deck is surprisingly good. These Groviles come in clutch for getting yourself set up, getting your Eggman set up because you do have to constantly set them up, but also thinning your deck out of the cards that you don't want in there anymore at the same time, which is really, really good. Plus, the Executor is a one energy attacker. This does require constant setup, and that can be a concern, especially when you're putting these little babies on the field for 40 HP, but the reliability is surprisingly good here, so I'm giving this an 8 out of 10. So overall, what do I think? Well, I'm giving this an 8.5 out of 10. I really do think this is one of the more consistent and better budget build decks in the Lost Thunder format. You've got a pretty good attacker in the Executor that can work over time GX decks into one-shot potential with really good defensive numbers at 160, plus you have Ultra Beast protection with the Skeptar, which is really clutch in, in a format that has a lot of Ultra Beasts out there, Blacephalons, Buzzwolves, Necrozmas, things like that. So I really do think this is a really good build in the current format. So a solid 8.5 out of 10 for me.